Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from JNH Aerospace, and welcome to part two of the Retro RC uh, installment of our Science Olympiad flight reviews for 2023. This is the Retro RC Cloud Hopper biplane. Uh, so it's for a, it's a Division C airplane, and so we've done a build video of it. We've talked about some of the strategies uh, of, of how to build it, um, pros and cons of the airplane. We, we established it's a, it's a good airplane, uh, looks like it has some potential, so now we're going to fly it. So I've got it CG'd a little bit tail heavy and, we're, um, and, and just a smidge, and so we're going to see how it goes from here. So we'll start with a test glide on this airplane. So we'll angle y'all down just a smidge, and so we'll hold the airplane up here. We're going to point it uh, a little bit nose down since um, with the low pitch prop it's not going to glide exceptionally uh, well and looks pretty good a little bit of a stall in the glide uh, but not bad um, i'll do that one more time so you can see it you can see a little bit of a stall there but looks pretty good all right so we've got 250 turns on a loop of three th a two gram loop of 330 second um, I'm using my uh, plastic O-rings on these. I just have become so addicted to them that that's just what I use. And uh, so this should give us just a, uh, an extended glide, basically, at this point. And wow, that's spicy. Okay, so this airplane has quite a bit of incidents. So you've got the positive angle uh, about uh, three, three or four degrees positive here in the wing. We've also got about uh, close to two degrees in the in the stab, so that's a lot. So I put uh, a little piece of lead on the nose uh, as far forward as I can safely get it. So let's see if that calms things down. Right, so we're still stalling, but less so. So we'll put another bit of clay uh, of lead on the nose and that should calm that down. Okay, so we're up to 300 turns now, so let's see what that does for us. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So pretty. Now, I don't know if we're going to get this thing to turn a circle here in the living room, but we're going to try just for sake of argument. Um, the thing looks nice in the air. All right, so I've added in a little bit more power, so let's see how this goes. And, ooh. Okay, so I do want to point out what I did there was that I added in a bunch, uh, a little bit of left thrust just by twisting the uh, the nose bearing, and clearly it, it does does not like that. I think it's because the um, the tail fins are kind of small, so they cannot th this plane can't handle a whole lot of left thrust. I also need to adjust my stab tilt by twisting the tail because we had some opposite tail tilt. All right, so now we're looking a little happier, um, just not gaining altitude. Oh, doing it again. Okay, so I took out, I remounted the stab with a little bit of um, opposite, and so hopefully that's going to let us turn tight enough to, to fly in here. Oh, there we go, look at that. And it's starting to kind of crank in there a little bit. I don't think this plane likes to turn this tightly. Um, it just is not quite happy with that. I, I do want to see if I, I bent up this wing tip just a little bit to provide some uh, wash in. And we'll see if that opens things up at all. Yeah, it definitely opens things up. Uh, now we're not turning. Let's try this again.
There we go. Okay, just to show, um, we've got the plane here, we've got our Division C box, and as you can see, no pun intended, the airplane has a lot of uh, space in general, like that's a lot. So this airplane comfortably fits in the bounds of this box, and that's because it's designed to fit into a, a banker box which frankly I would suggest um, giving up a little bit there, but your plane does fly pretty nicely. All right, so what we learned? Um, first of all, got it flying okay. Um, I did have a few issues, and, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I don't have any any two minute flights recorded. Uh, that I do not fault the airplane for. Uh, I, I don't know how well you could tell, but conditions were less than ideal and it doesn't look like we're getting better conditions anytime soon so is what it is uh the one flight you saw where i actually you know got more than one circuit around the living room wasn't great i have my christmas tree up 
is what it is. Plain, the pl I bounce that plane off the Christmas tree uh, every time. Uh, it was either that or the opposite wall, so um, just just almost there. Um, and you know, is is what it is. Uh, we we. We proved the airplane flies, flies well. I believe it does deliver the desired performance. So let's get into some of uh, the issues I ran into and what uh, pros and cons are there. You may have noticed we have an Icara prop on here. Here's the prop that comes with the kit. Uh, here's, here's kind of the deal. These propeller blades are very, very flexy as opposed to these that have a spar coming out pretty far. Um, this problem has gotten to the point that, uh, first of all, these propellers are of limited availability now, so that's its own issue. They're also much lower pitched, uh, which results in, and you can see I'm not, I'm not faking it, they're much lower pitched. So what you run into is if the airplane gets its nose down, these blades will tuck in like this and they'll go to negative pitch, and the airplane cannot pull out of that. We did get some successful flights with that, but the, the bottom line is in the conditions outside um, or turning very tightly, I just could not get this to, to work very well. So we switched over to the Icara prop, things smoothed out. Also, in all of that, I learned uh, through some test gliding without the rubber motor on that this airplane is not happy with its CG as per the plans. Instead, it wants its CG to be much further forward and you're seeing right there how we achieved that but the CG ends up way up there way forward now I think that's probably farther forward than it needs to be and in fact I can probably I can probably prove that right now so with the um, IFAS propeller in place the CG does come back a little bit further, still a little bit far forward, um, to, but but not bad, and it makes pretty good sense because this is a fairly short stab, small stab and short tail, um, whereas the recommended CG is back here, so we're half an inch forward at that, and I I find that the airplane just flies much better at that. Can you get it to fly at the plan's recommended CG? Probably, but you need really calm conditions, and to be fair. Um, Mark Freeland has the benefit of trimming in uh, places like Pontiac, which Pontiac has the calmest air of any flying site I have ever flown in. I'm serious about that. It is calmer even than the Kibbe Dome, and the Kibbe Dome is, dome is famous for how calm its air is. Um, but be that as it may, the, the bottom line is that in calm conditions, these problems tend to go away. But in, in, in turbulence, you, you start seeing issues like this. So move the CG forward, um, and I, you, know, you can bend in and out some incidents back here since the stab extends back beyond the tail. Um, although I have it, had it pretty close to the plan's recommended incident settings, and once you stick the Icara prop on it, it really likes those incident settings with a more forward CG. just really flies well like that. Um, so the issue though that I ran into is with the rubber motor all the way back here, we were having to add a lot of lead onto these uh, prop bearings to get the airplane to balance. So if you move the rear hook up here, and I determined this location very specifically, I determined it by balancing the airplane where it was gliding the smoothest, and then I measured from the back of the prop hook to that CG location and then from that CG location on back and that gave me my rear hook location so I can install the rubber motor and it will not change the CG of the airplane. And that allowed me to remove uh, about a gram of clay off the nose of the airplane. Now I still with this IFAS prop you can see, still see I've got a pretty good hunk of lead over here. Um, even with the Icara I have a pretty good hunk of lead and I think that's actually more than it needs. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, the airplane tends to come out tail heavy, the rear hook uh, definitely exacerbates that. Now I will say, this is flying on a loop of 1 8th, I kind of prefer how it flies on a loop of 1 8th, 
Um, it will, with both of these propellers in calm conditions though, it will fly on 332nd. You're not going to get a lot of climb, but you're going to get a decent climb. Uh, and I can see where it'll do two minutes on this rubber. That's, that's not in question. Uh, but again, you've got to have calm conditions to do it. With the 1 8th rubber, um, really the proper size is about, um, so 332nd is 332nd is 0 0.093 inches, um, 1 8th is 0.125, I think the optimum rubber size with an Icara prop is about 0.1, maybe even slightly less, like 0 0.098, something like that, I think that would be best. And, and I think that would really settle things out. Now, all that being said, uh, you can get rid of more weight up here without a huge modification to the kit. And the way that you do that is since we're moving this rear hook up here, you would want to take a straight edge and that would allow you to strip away some of the unnecessary material right here. Uh, something else that you could do if you are flying a, a box that you've bought yourself rather than the recommended banker box, which is much too small, is you could extend this stab back a, a full inch and still be legal, and that would give you more tail moment, and the airplane would fly a little bit easier as a result. All of that said, um, again, the only actual modification I made to the airplane was moving the rear hook forward. Uh, the other thing that I do see, uh, two things that I do see um, that I ran into problems with is getting this wing twist right, and you can see I have I keep trying to chase it out and I'm back to having wash in on the right wing. The airplane actually flies like that. It actually flies with wash in on the right side, but that's inefficient and it does rob you of flight time. So bear that, bear that in mind. Uh, and, and it's an issue of the alignment on these wing mounts. Now I finally figured out the way to do that is while you've got this wing mount assembly jigged in place, you would want to do some, um, set some, a, a vertical alignment piece across that would allow you to lock these uh, wing saddle points in place and then put the diagonals in and you'd be there. Um, again, I think that this wing saddle assembly is, is too uh, overbuilt. And one problem I am noticing as, as the tape is loosening up in use is that this wing is able to move around and it's able to twist a little bit. And that is because we're only constrained on the top here and ideally you need something to lock these pins against the side of the fuselage. Probably you could just tape that off and it would be fine. Um, I, I think that probably would be the solution and, and it would work great. So um, where does that leave us with this kit? I believe this is a good airplane. I believe it's a fun airplane. I think that if you have uh, the funds set aside to, to go after it, you really should. You'll learn things from this airplane. And with a modicum of effort, you can have a good flying airplane. If you source a stiffer propeller, and I don't blame Mark for this because Mark is flying the propellers he's able to get. But if you can get a propeller like this one on the airplane, you'll see a substantial improvement in performance. And, and you'll see a lot more potential in the airplane. Um, so, and, and of course, one eighth inch rubber will help you a lot. You could even go so far as to repitch the propeller on this Icara propeller to fully make use of this rubber. If you cannot get one of these, put carbon reinforcing on this prop out to about two thirds of diameter. It'll stiffen it up so it won't flare back in and you'll probably be able to get very good performance on this propeller all by itself, um, as Mark has proven. He's gotten two-minute flights with this setup. I don't know how he, well, I do know how he got it with the, the rear hook all the way back here. He flies in beautiful, calm conditions. Um, so I think it's an excellent kit. I think you should, you should seriously consider it. Uh, if for no other reason than to learn from it because there's there's a lot of opportunity to, to learn in here. I think it's a well-designed airplane, just has a few minor points that, that gave me trouble 
and have the potential to give most of you trouble. Um, but it, it's still worth pursuing, and it's still better than a certain other Division C kit out there that we haven't released the video on yet. But, you know, that's its own thing. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Retro RC 2023 Cloud Hopper, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.